Hello and welcome back to Let's Try It's Steam Next Fest. So I'm doing a bunch of demos and one of those is Astria. Six-sided oracles. Or just Astria if you like. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a while. It's a very beautiful looking game. It definitely has um, a unique style, which I really appreciate. Uh, and uh, this is a... Just so you know whether or not you should watch this video. This is a gonna be a, a deck buildy kind of game But it's more of a dice builder or a pool building if you like or dice pool building if you like um, But basically you're instead of building decks You're building a pool of dice that you're going to be drawing from and uh, using those to defeat or um, purify corrupted creatures So let's jump into it. I'm gonna do a new game. I'll be explaining the mechanics um, the best I can uh, we're just gonna go for Mooney. I have unlocked the second characters. There's apparently gonna be six characters that you can pick from, each with different playstyles. And as far as I can tell, this is the only thing that this um, this is this is what the game has to offer in terms of uh, meta progression. But I might be wrong about that. And the game is still early, so um, you know, with that comes the caveat of uh, anything you see here is probably not representative of the final product. But I will say that what I've played so far has been very good. So um, let's jump into a game with Mooney. Uh, you can see character co uh, complexity is is not super tough here. Um, we have some lore. This game's got quite a hefty introduction to the world. Um, and I mean, you know, with that, the art style, I think that it, it fits well. Um, and uh, a lot of it is kind of like astrology based. I mean, it's probably easy to tell that, but... Uh, I, I really dig it. We've got this, um, I have mentioned probably cynically in the last few like deck building uh, let's tries, but we, we do have this crossroads. I actually kind of like the way they do it in this game. I know that it's still the same crossroads kind of thing, but um, I like the symmetry in which they approach this. And it's, I don't know, it doesn't give me the same uh, sense of like, Oh, here's a generated set of, of actions. The fact that is that this th these have been fairly consistent for the most part, and that actually means that you might be able to build um, some of your own meta progression in the form of knowledge, uh, in the in, in the sense of like you you know what to expect and you can make um, you know better informed decisions in future playthroughs. I think that this is a good way of doing things, but um, I haven't played too many games, so I, I can't say that this is uh, the case for sure. So, I actually haven't seen this creature yet, so this is kind of kind of good. So yeah, I got I just have to underline. I really like this art style a lot, um, but uh, it's you know that's that's the obvious out of the way. I think uh, I actually also like the mechanics in this game. I was a little bit worried that this game was going to be a style over substance kind of thing. Um, it's easy for me to be cynical about those kind of things because if a game looks really good, it's going to sell based on its art style, on its presentation and execution. So it's easy for that game to not necessarily have deep mechanics to back it up with. But that's not the case here. Um, this game actually does some really interesting new things with the dice building format that I, I really appreciate. Uh, we've got a few things that we have to worry about here. Basically, the enemy is going to be making an attack and we can see that attack. Player corrupt deal 30, uh, three corruption to you. Self corrupt deal three corruption to themselves. Um, this is bad. Corruption is bad. We're trying to um, undo corruption. Uh, the enemy's health bar takes the form of corruption so if they have taken damage and they self-corrupt they're going to be essentially healing themselves um conversely our health bar takes the form of purification and if they uh corrupt us then we're going to be like losing health but it's a little bit more nuanced than that because here's the thing we kind of have two health bar bars in a sense and our health bar is also a currency or um, a kind of a gate. It's a, a little bit difficult to explain, but basically we have our purification bar here. Um, it's going to uh, allow us access to special abilities, but only if we are corrupted a certain amount. So for instance, um, we have this here, reroll. This is a special ability. We can't use it yet because we need to be corrupted a certain amount. 
Now, you might notice that of our playable dice right here, we also have a corruption, deal one corruption to any target. We could use that on the enemy, and there might be a good reason to do that. I mean, obviously corrupting ourselves is not something we necessarily always want to do, but if we were to corrupt ourselves, then we would be able to, uh, we would gain access to this reroll ability. So for instance, I might want to do that and then right click this in uh, this, this dice here to show, hey, uh, there's actually a lot better uh, po potential for this dice. It's it, We only rolled one purification, so we could re-roll that. Um, let's see here. There is a better potential here, but sometimes it's it's good to know when, you know, to cut your... Y you don't want to get greedy, right? Like, we could go for this, this better roll here, but we rolled pretty well on that. Um, but this one here, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good too. So we'll use this re-roll, and I'll use it on this dice here because I have a... I have a Good feeling that we'll be able to roll something better. We didn't, but you know, we didn't roll worse and there was a worse there. But the point here is that um, corruption isn't something we necessarily want to shy away from. And I think that this is a really cool mechanic. It is something that's going to hurt us. If this corruption uh, reaches basically our avatar here, if we this whole bar becomes corrupted, then we lose a heart. If we lose three hearts, then we die. So corruption is going to hurt us. But, um, you know, we, we can also use it as a currency. Um, anyway, that's a lot of explaining mechanics. I know that's, that's quite, a, quite a lot for, like, the first part of the game. But I, I guess I just want to, and I'll be kind of re-explaining things to make sure that um, I, I represent the game well. Um, we can convert one die from your hand. Oh, yeah, I could have done that to our corruption die, but we don't have to do that. I want to I want to represent this game well and I really want to underline that as well as actually being a very beautiful looking game this game also uh, does a very good job of of introducing some novelty into the genre um, and it's 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 welcomed so we got a hefty blow there you might have noticed um, the enemy over the, a couple things happened they corrupted themselves if they are at full health then they'll over corrupt themselves and if they over corrupt themselves, then they are able to uh, gain access to a special ability. In this case, they were able to deal three corruption to me. So in addition to attacking me with, um, uh, you know, an, an, an attack, they had to, you know, hit me with three corruption. They were able to corrupt themselves and then do another attack. So hence why we took like five damage there. But I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing because now we have um, access to this ability. This is going to let us draw an extra die. And then basically these uh, special abilities, I mean, they kind of work like comeback mechanics, which you, you are either going to like or you don't like. I think they're really fun when it's a single player game, you know, but um, deal purification. I'm just trying to see, is there is there something better here? Deal one purification to all enemies. So this one is, uh, there's a, you know, this, this uh, ability is objectively worse. Um, being able to deal purification to any target is better because it means we have the flexibility of using it on ourselves um this die here offering light shield is one we're basically always going to want to apply to ourselves because that's going to offer us protection um and we also gained uh, access to this ability that is going to let us purify the enemy and that that's one that's just a straight up attack there's no reason to like use that for anything else what do we have here oh we have enhance oh enhance is great so enhance only works on dice values of one um, and it basically just turns them into a six. So that's just an amazing move right there. Um, it's I like that die because it's context sensitive. Like you have to have a die with uh, a one, um, but it makes since it since it makes it so powerful, you really are going to try and go out of your way to have a one or make sure you can use those enhances. I've gone overboard with those dice and had too many enhances and no ones to spend them on. So you, it's it's possible to overdo it, but I, I just like that mechanic a lot. Um, we're gonna purify ourselves. This one is, I kind of wish this one was either reworded or tweaked because it says reroll up to two dice player purify. So this one is confusing a little bit because it, it, it makes you think like there is the potential to reroll, but you want to use it to purify yourself. But the problem is, is that you have to reroll things with this. So if I was to use this, it 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 must reroll something. I could reroll the enemy's dice. 
So we could do that. That's probably better. But now we've gone ahead and re-rolled it into something even better. Um, so that's no good. The good news though, I mean, we've got one, a little bit of protection, but they're not going to uh, over corrupt this time. So they won't be dealing like a ridiculous amount of damage to us. Oh, they did over corrupt. Oops. I guess I have to re... Um, I, I'm, I'm misinformed on how over corruption works. I thought it was if they were at full health. But it might just be when they corrupt themselves, they they get over corruption. Um, okay, so we lost the health there. That's really bad. <laughs> That's like really bad. Let's... Um, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to get ourselves another die. And um, we've got a bunch of ones. Do we have... Uh, I don't think we have... We, we really want to re-roll some of these. We've got a bunch of ones and no way to uh, improve them. We can't improve that one. That one's as good as it's going to get. That one's as good as it's going to get. These these dice kind of suck, but they are starter dice. So let's just re-roll that one because we could definitely get it higher. Yeah, that's much better. So let's see. We have five, seven, eight, nine. Not enough to... Oh, and then... and then uh, Yeah, okay. So 13. We, we have enough to kill them. Kill the enemy, I mean. And we've, we've purified them. I guess this creature just dies. A lot of creatures, when you purify them, will become nice creatures. And they're like, you know, happy little animals and they'll go and, and do their own thing. Um, okay, so we get we get some rewards. We get some currency, which we can spend at stores. This is uh, nothing new, really. Uh, and then we get to pick between three different dice pools. So these are these are dice offered to us from three different pools. Risky pool, balanced, and safe. This It's pretty self-explanatory, but I, I do really appreciate this. Um, these are different kind of play styles. You shouldn't really bank on any one very, like, you know, you, you need to have backups. Like, if you want to do risky, you totally can. And obviously, there's uh, an incentive to do this. But you should have, uh, make sure that you're not just banking on Purify. And you have things to back it up with. Like, I have a, I, you do have an ability to convert corruption so if you had some more dice that would let you convert corruption or uh offset it somewhat then this would be a a, a good one to pick this is actually pretty tempting I, I this this is one of the best risky dice i've seen so i'm gonna go for that i played a, a run where i just went balanced and that worked out pretty well um this uh, this offers twilight sigil twilight sigil Creatures with Twilight Sigil receive X purification whenever a die is converted. This is a cool mechanic. Um, basically, this is like a status we permanently um, uh, apply to ourselves in combat. And whenever we convert a dice, we get a benefit or we, we self purify, which is nice. Um, and then this risky die here, reconvert one die from any target until the end of enemy's turn interesting and then deal two corruption to yourself yeah this this risky die is a lot more risky i don't think i like that uh and then we have okay so this is a good safe die to get with that risky die so this one allows us to convert um i would love to take the twilight sigil but why don't we take this to offset the risky die and then maybe we can take some twilight sigils in the future choose up to two risky dice choose up to two balanced dice or just take some take some currency um that's not a lot of currency, so this is like the safe bet. But it you don't get a very big reward. I'm going to go for the two balanced dice because it, I tend to like these dice. Ooh, that's a neat one. Deal five purification to any target. Add one wound hex dice. Yeah, wound hex dice are... Um, yeah, they, they're... They're um, kind of self-explanatory, but if you've played any kind of like Slay the Spire or uh, Monster Train, you kind of know what those are. They're basically just like extra things in your hand that are going to hurt you. We have Enhanced Dice. I do like Enhanced Dice, but I don't think that we can really make this work for us just yet. Kind of like this Meditate. Deal five purific purification to yourself or and draw one die. Those are really nice. Five purification. So this is like safety. And then, or deal one corruption yourself. I think that this is a good one to take. Ooh, this is a really nice one. Oh, these apply wounds, right? 
This is a good one as well, but it comes with risk for sure. Um, deal with one corruption all enemies. It's a. Uh, let's take the ful fulminant, fulminant uh, quills. And we'll do another combat. So yeah, losing one health isn't the end of the world. We have uh, ways of getting that back. But I, it's a little embarrassing on my part to have done that so early. Convert one die from your hand until the end of the enemy's turn. This is a good one. Um, we could convert this. We could re-roll it as well. And we may as well use this die. Well, actually, it might be better to re-roll this. Nah, we'll, we'll use it to convert. And I mean, I'm not sure why we care about it happening like until the enemy's turn. I don't know why that that matters that much, but we're just going to do some damage. I gotta say, I also I haven't really mentioned or talked about this, but I, I do really like the uh, sound effects and music as well. Like the execution on this game is amazing. Um, at the end of this of its turn, apply one doom to this creature. Increases dice corruption value. Okay, so this one has uh, comes with a doom status effect, which they're gonna buff themselves each round. So there there comes a kind of like um, a little bit of a time limit here. This one's only gonna get worse as time goes on. Player corrupt. Deal three, two plus one corruption to you. So that just the reason it looks like that is because of the uh, doom that it's given itself, and it's gonna keep doing that. We have two corrupt dice in our pool, which is not good, but we do also have some uh, options here. Uh, you know what, so, okay, this balanced dice, we can only purify ourselves. So actually, it's a good, it wouldn't be a bad idea to corrupt ourselves, so we gain access to all of these extra abilities. And then we use this to purify ourselves and also draw that extra die. So that's what I... Oh, that's, that's... That's really unfortunate. That's fine. We can convert that. We probably will just convert this. We don't have to play this die, I don't think. Or maybe we do, actually. Deal for purification and target. Add one wound X tights to your dice pool. Um, we could just apply this to the enemy. That will give them over corruption. So that's how that works. If they get corrupted in any way they get over corruption but we're just gonna go ahead and, and do some damage to them let's uh yeah let's re-roll this dice because one is just not gonna cut it oh yes got that three nice all right we're gonna do three three damage or three corruption and that's actually good for us because it's gonna give us access to that uh extra attack Good news is that this um, creature doesn't seem to be able to corrupt themselves. So here's the hex dice. This is the one that we get for playing that other, um, that other die. But like you know, again, not the end of the world. This is this one only. No, this one offers light shield if we want. Since they're about to do three, three corruption, it might be a good idea to recover some one, give us a shield, then we can use that on ourselves we block it um do feel four damage we can re-roll but like actually can we re-roll three is actually on the low end of what they can do so re-rolling the enemy's dice is not necessarily a good idea so and we don't want to re-roll that that one was actually a pretty good roll we could try and re-roll this ah doesn't look like it's gonna work so we'll just end our turn like I say, you can't really use that die unless you re-roll something, so it just it ends up being kind of a, a nuisance in some ways. Rerolling is not always what you want to do. So this is going to deal one corruption to any target, and then deal three corruption to any target. Uh, deal one purification to all enemies. Are there better options here? Not really. Better options here? Yes, really. Uh, and yeah, so what we want to do... Like, actually, three is really good. So what we would want to do here is, rather than re-roll this, is just um, convert it because then we guarantee we get the three. And then we would like to re-roll this for... Okay, we didn't get the ten. That's fine. 
but we're we're gonna win here so we don't have to worry about that corruption we got some more currency we get some more access to dice what are these enhance I do like enhance these are twilight sigil let's go for the twilight sigil since I seem to be building towards um, being able to convert dice what is this? Steal one purification of an enemy for each safe dice you have in your dice pool. Uh, this is the first time I've seen a die that synergizes with itself. Apply one serenity to any target. Serenity inc increases purification received by X. Huh. Interesting. I like that. Uh, but I, I, wa I want to build in the Twilight Sigil. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good one to build into. Uh, choose up to two safe dice. Let's. This is a forge shop. Spend star shards with uh, sentinels. Acquire new sentinels or upgrade the ones you have. Sentinels are basically pets or like companions that offer a bit of extra attack. So I do like those. So why don't we take up to two safe dice? We don't have to take them. And and you know the key to uh, these pool or deck building games is is sometimes not taking stuff. Increases enhance effectiveness by X. Increases a die with any type of purify action without. Okay, yeah. So this one would in, uh, in, improve enhance, but it looks to be kind of a pain because it looks like we have to enhance most of the time. I feel like I'd rather take this purify. It's just a good die. Or change one die from your hand into purify one action until the end of the enemy's turn. Um. I'll take this middle one. It's it's not bad. So what is this? Apply one Scarlet Sigil. S uh, creatures with Scarlet Sigil receive X purification whenever you play a risky die. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Yeah, let's take that. Since we are kind of building into risky. So yeah, I'm going to go to the Sentinels. Hey, it's the Oracle. How can I help you? These were two uh, characters that were in the tutorial and they're 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 pretty fun. I have taken this uh, ancient eff effigy. Um, I kind of do wish there was a bit more information here. Uh, I guess it sh tells you how they can be upgraded, but it doesn't really tell you about their pool. Oh, show dice. Here we go. Never mind. I I'm wrong. So this one will offer enhance. Um, so this one can enhance your dice. And then this one apply incorruptible to any target blocks all corruption until the start of your next turn this is this seems like a really good one so yeah let's take the stasis clock i took the ancient effigy last time but yeah i want to i want to take the clock that seems like a really good defensive uh creature i don't know how many sentinels you can have but i'm assuming you can have more than one i believe i've seen screenshots where someone has like up to three so we could do a hard battle. This will yield more star shards, a chest, and a star blessing. The star blessing is really what you want here. And yeah, I am going to do this. Probably risky since I've already taken a, a heart of damage. But I like that risk reward. Okay, so we've already got our twilight sigil. This is good. We can also apply dice to our companion here. Um, we could re-roll their die for that potential uh, incorruptible. And then, oh, enhance, perfect. Um, we could, we could enhance. Yeah, we've got tons of enhance right now. Um, let's go ahead and enhance our die and deal some damage. What is this guy, what is he about to do? Uh, player corrupt, deal corruption to you. Wound hex, add two wound hex into your draw pool. So they're just going to be able to draw more dice. Um, don't think that there's much we can really do. So let's just like do some damage. We don't have to really big brain anything yet. And the good news is that their over corrupt pools are pretty sizable. So if they manage to over corrupt themselves or corrupt themselves in any way, we shouldn't have to worry about them being able to use their abilities because it does reset we do have a lot of hex destroy this dice this is a hex dice that just purges itself so i guess it, it just takes up room in our dice pool so we did draw uh, another one this is actually a pretty good like we got lucky with this one because this die could have been far far worse 
we'll just get rid of it um we could actually convert this die and then potentially enhance it do we have an enhance no we do have twilight sigil though so let's get that twilight sigil on us and that way when we um convert actually is this deal one corruption yourself oh this is actually a good die it, it we rolled well on that one so let's purify this one or or convert this one and that way we are uh using our twilight sigil to get rid of all of that corruption the these guys are about to do quite a lot of stuff apply one doom oh doom's no good and then there this guy is about to do two corruption uh and give themselves a hex die so they're about to do five damage to me i i can take the five damage but it might well we we, we are going to be able to um, purify oh here we go now we could use this incorruptible on the pet on the on the sentinel and that way they won't die because the your sentinel can die if they die it's not a big deal they will um come back at the end of combat but it means we lose them for the rest of the combat that being said if i'm not going to use their die to help me then why even have them right so we'll do that we'll do some attacks um we'll use this we can only use that on ourselves but that's fine because we could use a bit of extra purification and uh, maybe we could have re-rolled some dice there but i'm pretty happy with how that went and yeah we're gonna be blocking all of their attacks in this round and they did attack me so that was that was really good really really good um we did get unlucky with some of these rolls but actually no we didn't because this is fantastic creatures with scarlet sigil receive x purification whenever you play a risky dice are these yes so we do have one risky dice oh this is i this is really good really really good so let's go ahead and throw some scarlet sig sigil on that lad and we also get another die can we roll better on this convert one die from your hand we do like convert don't we we do like convert um so let's start by converting this we've got that incorruptible again so let's convert this we get five from that did it convert it Ah. oh wait no it's that was not the risky dice can we convert this one as well hmm we have doom increases dice corruption value by one we could re-roll this yeah we should re-roll this yes oh heck yeah bud um i actually think that it would be better to play it on the other creature because this guy's still going to take a damage from play me playing a risky dice is there any way maybe i should have played it on them because then it could have killed them yeah that was misplay for sure that's fine um yeah i was kind of hoping i could enhance this but it's fine i think we're doing quite well right now oh press the wrong button there <clears throat> we are about to take some damage but this guy i think the thing i'm more afraid of is the oh okay corrupt all is not good our, our sentinel cannot take very much damage before they die um we could re-roll the sentinel deal six purification to any target well that's good random purify let's um let's maybe use that first okay we got uh, we got uh, quite a lot of hex dice let's see what happens here okay that was actually great i was hoping it would land on him because then i can use this to just kill them or you know sorry purify them yeah so they turned into a happy little little plant lad and he's he's so happy i'm gonna use the sentinels uh die to heal themselves like i say they can't take too many of those blows before they die and i didn't take any corruption so i wasn't able to re-roll that last die but that's fine we are getting increased to doom so any any dice that we roll um that have corruption are gonna be higher but th that being said th like that's a good thing because then we can convert them and that means that they are just going to be better for us 
Um, this was a good roll. So we should just use that, not re-roll it. We could re-roll that, but I don't think it's actually going to benefit us. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do some damage. No reason to really do anything else. We could have re-rolled the enemy diet, but I think that they rolled like we we got a lucky roll on there. I do really appreciate that not only can we see what the enemy is doing, but we can also see what their potential would have been, and even affect what kind of attack they're doing by uh, changing up their you know re-rolling their attack. And before we convert this, there might be a way to. Oh yeah, see. See, we want to cancel this. We can apply some more Twilight Sigil to ourselves. Not that it matters. We already have five, but that way when I convert this, I'm getting seven. And um, now yeah, we can just like start. We, we can hit this guy real hard and also apply Uncorruptible to ourselves. They rolled like pretty well. Two corruption to you and add another wound dice. Yeah, I mean like that's fine. We can take that and and sometimes it's better to you know Better the devil, you know than the one that you don't kind of deal And like again, I just really like this mechanic of uh, Like corruption dice, <clears throat> you know a lot of other games you'd be like, oh, I have to mitigate this as much as I can But in this game, it's like no actually corruption is a good thing like yeah, you have to kind of manage it. You have to balance it. Yeah, you kind of have to mitigate it. But at the same time, the fact that you can use it to your benefit, I think is a really cool way of, of doing things. Like for instance, doing corruption to ourselves, not a terrible thing. We get an extra attack dice here. And in fact, we win because of that. We didn't lose any health during the tough combat. So that was really good. We get to choose a die. We could choose another risky dice. Change one die from your hand with any type of purify action with value one into three action. Draw three action until the end of enemy's turn. Or a bunch of deal corruption to yourself. Convert up to two dice from your hand until the end of enemy's turn. Convert is good, but I think we've kind of got that under control. That being said, if we take another risky dice, we may not have it under control. But I, I like this die. This, this seems like a good one. Then we have apply one serenity. I like the idea of serenity, but apply one torment to all targets increases corruption. This is too risky. This one also feels too risky, but having an extra die with convert is not a bad thing. Now that we've got another, like you, you really want to kind of balance your pool. Now the star blessing are basically like relics from like any other deck builder game. Um, these these have been good. They they synergize with certain play methods While you have six corruption on your corruption meter you deal two additional purification So this one uh, builds into you corrupting yourself or having corruption at the end of the draw phase You can reroll all dice from your hand. This is interesting uh, At the start of each battle refresh your virtues Enable all your virtues Ignore any effects that disable your virtues. Not sure about this one. I don't think I have any virtues. At least I'm not sure about that. So I think this bottled Aurora is... Uh... Actually, to be honest, I think the Zenith Ring is going to be better for us. I, I feel like I'm going to be more likely to have six corruption than I am going to care about rerolling my entire hand. Destroy one die from your hand. dice pool. Seems like a good idea. And then we can enhance one of our Sentinels or even buy a new one. Or we could go for more dice shards and then spend dice shards to improve your dice pool. Here you can forge, destroy, or duplicate dice. Seems like a good way to go. Still, it's tempting. This way we get to destroy a die and then also enhance our pool or uh, enhance our sentinel. So let's go for that. So what do we want to destroy? Probably a starter die. I think if I was going to pick one, it would be this one. I don't like the the shield so much because they kind of um, make playing that die weighted towards you have to play it on yourself. And I like the flexibility of being able to play on either myself or the enemy. Mesa, here's what I can make with your star shards. So we can again make this agent eff effigy or the guardian. Every hero needs a squire. 
what did the spire do okay so having a sentinel that has just light shields is actually i think better in some ways because that way we have protection we could also use this guardian to protect our other sentinel or we could have um this sentinel that has enhance which i do like or we could upgrade our original one and that would just give them more Oh, okay, so it doesn't just enhance their health, it also enhances their pool. Okay. Um let's let's go for this ancient effigy. I like this I like this lad. And he's got a little bit of health, so he can uh with he can take a blow. And we get another star blessing for free, which is really nice. Uh, whenever you or a sentinel deal corruption to an enemy, you receive th three purification. I'm not so likely to do that. Whenever you or a sentinel deal corruption to an enemy with at least four corruption, convert that enemy die. Interesting. And we got this bottled Aurora again. Well, I think that's... I, I don't think I'm going to be dealing corruption to the enemy. At least that doesn't seem to be my playstyle. I will pray to Estria to recover a heart, sacrifice a heart, gain a star blessing, or leave. Let's recover our heart. I have definitely in the past taken that, um, you know, sacrifice a heart for a star blessing. If you haven't, uh, if you can't tell, I usually like to play things fairly risky. But I've also lost against this boss, so, um, you know. Do we want to re-roll? I don't think we do. I kind of like what we've rolled here. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, I would like to re-roll this. B both our sentinels, honestly. So maybe if we can do some corruption. It doesn't look like we can do corruption yourselves change up to two dice from your hand with any type of purify action with value one into draw so we do have two here this is actually going to work out quite well and um i actually i don't know how long does that convert until the end of the enemy's turn so i guess it yeah once they're used they're pretty much donezo um apply three twilight sigil to ourselves let's go ahead and do that and honestly three is enough like we could next time we get twilight sigil apply it to our sentinels as well which you never know it might actually help but yeah let's um let's see here is this a uh, apply ah to all all targets so we're definitely going to want to protect our clock here because they can't really take two blows Deal two corruption to you, player unholy mist. Apply two one unholy mist to you. This uh, this unholy mist becomes a problem really quickly. Uh, deal three purification to any target. Can we? Re yeah, we. That is actually the worst roll we could get. So why don't we go ahead and deal one corruption to ourselves, and then we can use this to re-roll that. Is this a? We could re-roll this as well. Convert one die from your hand. We don't really want to convert. We don't have anything to convert. That being said, we do want to draw three more dice. So what do we got here? This is good. Enhance one. We do have one to enhance. So there we go. We could also enhance uh, our, set our sentinels. So they offer some extra ones in case we want to build into an enhanced strategy, which I, I have been known to do. We do have uh, more Twilight Sigils. So why don't we go ahead and apply that to some of our sentinels? doesn't make sense to apply two twilight sigil to our clock because they can't really take two purify if they've if they've taken two corruption then they're dead basically that being said i guess they are going to take one so we'll see in the future maybe um now we can maybe start thinking about no we we still want to do some more stuff here i would like to re-roll this die and two is good we have like a 30% chance to make this better. Sure, let's go for it. We'll reroll this and this. Let's see if we can get better. 
There we go, we did get better. And that one was better as well. So we can start to actually do some damage now. And actually, let's recover our one corruption. Because we're about to take some corruption. Yeah. And they also deal corruption to themselves. Which, it doesn't seem like... Uh, I don't, uh, I don't really know if we want to re-roll this. We also have re-roll potential. I, I don't like that star sigil, I have to say. Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be a problem. Creatures with Scarlet Sigil receive purification whenever you play a risky die. Do we have a risky die right now? We don't. Um, so that's a problem. Can we re-roll this? We can, but we kind of got basically the best roll. There was one other roll, but it didn't really, doesn't really matter. Uh, we should definitely re-roll this one. We got a really bad roll on that. So why don't we go ahead and use this starter die? We could roll it better, but I honestly, let's just use it. There we go. So we got a six and a draw one. This is good. Um... I think I'm going to use the, uh, our, our effigies, or not effigies, sorry, sentinels to kind of heal themselves. I wish we had a enhance. Enhance would have been good. Oh, this is only purify yourself. Hate when that, uh, when we get that. Okay. Right. And they have, um, wait, they, they... So this uh, Unholy Mist creates Shadow Mantle, which basically makes um, dealing damage or doing uh, purification really difficult. It, it, it's, it's just a problem. Um, it's going to be a problem for us as well, because not only are they putting it on, on themselves, they're also putting it on us. So when we take corruption damage, it's going to be harder to uncorrupt that. Convert one die from your hand until the end of enemy's turn. Um, do we want to re-roll that? No, that's kind of like the best we can hope for. Well, it isn't really. Let's re-roll bo both these dice. Wow. Yeah, we got very unlucky there. Um, is this... Okay, they're only going to be dealing damage to us, so we don't really have to worry about our sentinel. So let's just focus on trying to do some damage to the boss. I won't lie, this boss is hard. So yeah, they have four shadow mantles. So they just like get free shields. I wish there was like basically any way to get rid of those shields. It's kind of a problem. Um, do we want to reroll all of this? No, not really. Uh, like, I want to get rid of that. This is purify an enemy. Could it have been better? Not really. Um, we did get incorruptible, which is good. We'll use that. Uh, we'll draw one. I would like to convert things. Did we get a risky die? We haven't really been getting our risky dies yet. Um, do we want to convert this? I think we do. I mean, I, I, we definitely do because it builds into our twilight. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to get rid of our, <clears throat> of our current corruption as well, or our current starlet mantle or whatever you want to call it. Scarlet mantle? Shadow mantle. My bad. There's, there's a lot of nomenclature that I'm getting wrong right now. Um, so they're about to deal four damage to me. So if I don't do something to mitigate that, then I'm going to be in trouble. So I'll we'll use the Sentinel to heal myself for one. And then we're just going to do as much as we can to the enemy. And we're making sure that we're doing as much as we possibly can. I 
I think uh, I think things are going pretty well. We are going to be blocking at least the corruption, but we are still taking on Unholy Mist. Um, can these be better? The only one that could have been better is this one. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm good. We we pretty much are always gonna have a reroll, so rerolling all of our dice is not very um interesting to me. We can enhance. Oh, we can actually enhance this starter die. That would be kind of nice. I wouldn't mind rerolling our clock. And then this is convert. We don't really have anything to convert, so I'm pretty happy with what we got. I would like to reroll this and also our clock to try and get that uncorruptible. We got the uncorruptible and we got unlucky on this, but also converting that isn't a bad thing. So what do we want to use this enhance on? There's a lot. There's actually some pretty interesting options here. Um, I tell a lie. There's not really any interesting. We, we should just like use it on anything. So I'm actually, um, I was thinking what we could do is, uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't really make sense. All right, let's just convert this. We, we only benefit from doing that. We'll uh, use unblock uncorruptible on us. They're not doing corrupt all, so we don't have to worry about our sentinels, and we're just going to hit them as hard as we can. Oh, this is only corrupt, uh, purify ourselves. That's fine. I guess we can also put shields, light shields on the enemy. And the reason that matters is it means that they can't corrupt themselves, which is really quite nice. Um, balanced starter safe. So we got one risky die, but we actually, I don't think we have any way of playing it right now. Oh, that's not true. We have plenty of ways of playing it. Okay. So we don't want to reroll. Um, oh, we can't play it. Oh, I guess it's in cards in your hand. Yeah, from your or dice from your hand. So we can't use this on sentinel dice. That is a bummer. I just realized this is, says we can apply Twilight Sigil to any target. So actually, we could apply Twilight Sigil to the boss, and then every any time we convert a corrupted die, we have the potential to uh, deal more or extra damage to the enemy. That's actually really cool. I, I like that a lot. I kind of want to re-roll, I know this is silly, but I kind of want to re-roll this die. Here's my thinking. Oh, we don't, we don't have a re-roll. Oh shoot, maybe I should have re-rolled. Oh, bummer. We actually don't have any options here. I wanted to re-roll this because it was only going to benefit us. If it was a three, if it was the corrupt, then we could have converted that and done some extra damage to the enemy. Or if it was a one, then we could have um, turned it into a draw three. Unfortunately, we our, our options are limited right now, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, do as much as we can. Oh, did they have a corrupt all? They do. They are doing a corrupt all. We don't really have anything we can do about that, though. They aren't going to kill any sentinels as far as I can tell. It just sucks. Oh, and then they're doing Unholy Mist to all targets. That's a problem. Because now our Sentinels also have Unholy Mist. Um, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. The only thing we want to reroll is maybe this Risky Die. We have more Twilight Sigil. And I think I am just going to apply that to the enemy. Um, so we only stand to gain here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll re-roll this one. And if it's still corrupt, that's fine, because then we'll just go ahead and convert it. 
that means we still get to play it and then we still deal uh, quite a lot of damage to the boss um we'll deal the enemy isn't uh corrupting all so we'll go ahead and put uncorruptible on ourselves we will just hit them and um yeah our clock doesn't have uh this shadow mantle yet so we'll go ahead and heal them for that one oh i guess they're about to do feel four damage so we're about to take actual damage i should have I should have uh, conserved a little bit of purification for ourselves. My bad. Oh no, never mind. We have we have uncorruptible. So never mind. I, I actually played it correctly. And we're actually going to see uh we we might see a victory here. Um let me see. We have scar safe die. Do we have it do we have a risky die? No, we don't. We have a safe die and a draw one. I'm totally cool with this. Let's start by playing this to draw another one. We can use this to re-roll. I don't think I care about re-rolling that. We could re-roll this one for sure. And let's go ahead and do that. We'll re-roll it and we succeeded on the re-roll. Um, so now we can use this to enhance. We'll enhance this die. And we'll convert this die. And we're pretty much, I think, going to win here. Yep. Nice. What a happy little turtle we turned it into. You won. Thanks for playing. What a great game. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the full version of this, the 1.0. Um... This is a this is a really cool one. I, I really appreciate what uh, what they're doing with this one. Really unique art style. Really polished and ex like well executed art style. Um, actually like really deep and unique mechanics. Like I, I couldn't ask for for more or better. Um, from another entry to I think um a very crowded genre. Uh, this one stands out in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to it. Maybe, maybe I'll even do a series on it. I've been kind of straying, like, I have avoided doing series on deck buildings or, or de dice building games, but this could be a first. Depends on, on if there's call for it. But anyway, Astria, have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.